If you want an awesome looking patio, but don't want to spend a lot of money, I have some great ideas for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz and in one of my last videos, I showed you how I updated two patio spaces at my lake house. I'll link that video for you guys down in the description box. I put together some awesome budget friendly DIYs that I'm gonna show you today. So first up, we're going to create an easy wood succulent box. I have a similar box that I created for my dining room space and I always get questions like, how do you put that together? So today I'm gonna to show you how to create this box. Now you're going to need to pick up two boards. Now, since this is going to be an outdoor planter, I decided to go with cedar boards, but if you wanna keep it inside, you could really use any board that you want. But I bought two cedar boards at Lowe's. One of the boards is a one by six by six. The other board is a one by four by six. So I'm going to start by measuring my coffee table where this is going to sit to decide, you know, how long I want my planter box to be. I cut two side pieces that were the same length. I'm going to go to my smaller board, which is my one by four by six board. And I'm going to cut that down to the same length as my two side boards. Next, I'm going to use my nailer, which I will link below. I love this nailer. You guys know I use it all the time. I'm gonna nail the sideboards to the bottom board. Next, I'm gonna come in and cut side pieces and I'll nail those in place as well. What's your weakness? What's your type? Somehow I wanna know all about you. I'm gonna sand any rough edges on the box. Now, since this is going to be an outside planter, it's important to have drainage. So I used my drill to create some drainage holes on the bottom of the box. Now it's time to fill up this box and really you could do anything you wanted. I put some rocks that I had around my lake house on the bottom just to kind of create some filler. Then I went to the different packaging I get in the mail and I found some foam pieces and I'm gonna use that to put on top of my rocks. Inside my box, I'm going to be using supplies from Dollar Tree for this planter. I filled it up with some of the Dollar Tree natural stones. And then another great tip whenever you want to fill up a planter box like this, so you don't have to buy a ton of rocks, grab a form of moss. That's going to be a great filler to cover like your white foam pieces. So I'm going to be adding in some Spanish moss with the help of one of my little helpers. Then we'll add some more Dollar Tree rocks to the top. I also grabbed some succulents at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pull those off of the bottom compartments and push them into my planter. And you wanna make sure that you put them in really good so they don't you know, fly out if there's a windstorm. And here's a look at how this planter turned out. It's super easy to put together. I know you guys could create one of your own. So at my lake house, it kind of has a really nondescript front door. It's on the side and you kind of walk down this hill. So I wanted something that just kind of screamed, this is the front door, this is where you enter. I thought if I added some planters, it would dress it up. So I was at Dollar General probably about a month ago and I found these really great planters. They were only $14. So if you need some planters, that's a great place to look. I bought two of them in the black color. Another thing that I decided to do was actually use some faux plants outside versus real ones. I was worried about how often I'd actually be down here to water the plants. So I felt like it would be better to invest in faux plants and like the really large ones. So I added some leftover foam that I had from packaging into the base of my planters. I added the planters in and I filled it around the edges with some foam just to make sure that the planter was stationary. And then I added some more foam and put in some bubble wrap on the top. It's really great to fill things with extra packaging, all that packaging we get that we really just 
don't need anymore, you could use it to fill your planters. Now I needed to add weight to the top of here to really hold these planters in place. So I added in some black rocks. These are from Dollar Tree. I feel like these black rocks look really high end and they work perfectly with this black planter. Again, to fill some of that area, I went in with Spanish moss and added some additional black rocks. And I put these planters on either side of my front door. If you guys have made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go down to the comments and leave the word of the day, which is planter. Of course, I needed a rug to put in between my planters and I wanted something that was gonna be pretty heavy duty. So I love these rugs that you can pick up at Ikea. They're super inexpensive. My idea for this rug was to create kind of like a plaid pattern. So I added in some painter's tape, which I love doing. I think this is so fun to kind of create the pattern that I wanted. Next, I came in with a matte black spray paint and I spray painted the entire rug with two coats. Then I removed the painter's tape once it had a chance to dry. Now the key is with these rugs, you wanna really seal these rugs. So I added in a gloss finish to my rug to protect it and seal it. When I added the rug at my front door, I realized that it was a little small for the space. So I'm thinking about adding an additional rug underneath. So let me know what you guys would do. Would you leave it as is or add a rug underneath? Let me know down in the comments. I grabbed a black bench off of Amazon. This was under $100 for this bench and I put it together. It took me maybe 15 or 20 minutes to put it together. I did realize it would have been easier if I had someone to help me put this together, but I was able to manage to screw all the components together. I added the bench next to one of my planters on that long wall that I have. <laughs> I dressed it up with a throw blanket from Amazon as well as an outdoor pillow from Home Goods. And here's how this little front door area looks. My channel is so close to getting to 700,000 subscribers and I'm really trying to get there this summer. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, consider it, and it would really help me out. Now seating and ottomans can be really expensive in outdoor spaces. So I wanted to show you how you could create one of your own. So I grabbed this inflatable ottoman from Five Below. I also picked up some nautical rope off of Amazon. Now this is a little bit different than the nautical rope that I typically get. It's actually more of a thicker nautical rope. I bought three spools of it. And for this project, I used two and a half. Now you guys know I love putting together anything with nautical rope or a rug, a tray, and this was no different. So I inflated the ottoman to start with. Then I started with adding my rope to the top of my ottoman. Now here's the key whenever you're doing this. You wanna make sure that you don't put the hot glue 
on the ottoman itself because it could melt your ottoman and you know it would deflate you don't want that to happen so you want to concentrate your glue onto the rope as you're putting it on so i started at the top and added the rope in a circle and i just continue to add hot glue to the edge of my rope so this is a balance because you don't want the glue to be too high because you'll be able to see it you don't want it to be too low so that it gets on your ottoman so just try to put it in the middle and wrap your rope as you go you're going to continue to add rope until you've basically used your entire spool and then you can start a new one in that same place when you're wrapping it around make sure that you fill any gaps As I was going down the sides, I realized it was easier to flip it upside down. I was able to get the rope tighter together. And you're just gonna fill it up till you get to the very bottom of where your ottoman will sit. And then you can just cut it off at the end. This ottoman is so easy to put together, but looks really cute in your outdoor space. You could even use it in an indoor space. Did you guys know I have a second channel called List Fenwick Daily? On this channel, I post DIYs daily as well as exclusive content that you're not gonna see here. So make sure you go check out that channel and follow me there so you get daily DIYs. Have you guys seen this really inexpensive rug at Ikea? It's usually around like $3.99 and it's thin. I thought it would be the perfect pillow to make an outdoor pillow just because it's got this really heavy weight to it. I've also used the same rug for indoor pillows as well. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different because we're actually gonna be creating a round pillow, which round pillows are so popular right now. They're in, you see them on all the high-end sites. So I grabbed a round pillow form off of Amazon to use to stuff this pillow. Now I'm gonna put my round pillow form on one side of my rug and I'm gonna trace around it with a Sharpie. I'm gonna start by cutting the fringe off of the side of the rugs. Next, I cut out that circle, but I left an inch around the edge. This is going to help me when I go to sew it. With my cutout circle, I added that to the other side of my rug, traced around that and cut it out. So I'm gonna place one of my circles down on my table with the right side up. Next, I'm going to pin the fringe around the edges of my pillow. Then I'm gonna take the second circle and put the right side of it on top of the fringe and pin that in place. Now your next step is to sew around the edge of your pillow so that you sew that fringe in place. Now, as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you stay on your fringe about the same way all around. This can be a little tricky to do, so sometimes I kinda of look as I'm sewing. Now you wanna sew it almost completely together. You need to keep a little bit of an opening so you can put that pillow in. Next, I'm gonna take the pillow and push it right side out. I'm gonna add in the pillow form. and then I'm gonna hand sew the end of it together. And here's how the pillow looks on my patio couch.
If you guys haven't watched my other patio video, make sure you go check that out. It's linked below and I'll talk to you in our next one. Bye.